You've tried it all. You've bought the new car. You've gotten new shoes, clothing. You look good. You even have created the relationships that you think you should have. But there seems to not still be that true happiness in your life. In this episode, we're going to talk about how can you wake up every morning and have true happiness. Serve for authentic fulfillment. We're going to talk about how service can help us to be authentic in who we are and also be fulfilled, meaning that not only are you bringing joy to others, but you begin to have joy within yourself. And your source of joy is not from the things from the outside. So it's not partial, it's not temporary, but it's something that is way more permanent. Hey, let's jump into this episode, Serve for Authentic Fulfillment. Welcome to the Produce On Purpose podcast. I'm your host, Randy Atkins Jr., author, teacher, speaker, preacher, and lifelong learner. I've found that laughter is good for the soul. So here's our dad joke for the week. I was addicted to the hokey pokey, but I turned myself around. Also, here's another one. The bank keeps calling me and I don't know why they keep giving me all these compliments. They say I have an outstanding balance. Hey, share that with somebody this week. Have some laughs, have some fun. Laughter is definitely good for the soul. I'm going to start this episode off with the scripture. Ecclesiastes 12 and 8 says, Everything is meaningless, says the teacher, completely meaningless. And then I'm going to read Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. That's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commands, for this is everyone's duty. In Ecclesiastes, it actually starts off in chapter 1 with Solomon, I believe is the author of this book, that he starts off by saying everything is meaningless and that he tries everything in this world. That means he tries women, he tries getting all the money, all of the knowledge of this world. And his final conclusion, which we see in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, is that we should take everything that you can try in this world, no matter what you do, but the final conclusion is this. Fear God and obey his commands. That's your duty. As I begin to think about that and look at that is uh, we all try different things in this world. And I believe in sharing that with uh, the youth as they grow up and all of us as we continue to explore life in our journeys is that we should try different things in this world. However, none of that will provide you great, the greatest value other than if you are able to actually reach some type of fulfillment. This scripture actually helps us to get a gauge of where our fulfillment really lies. A lot of our fulfillment lies within really giving our creator, God, the greatest glory by doing what we were born to do. We were born to be producers. We were born to be creators. We were born to really go out into this world and create in this world. Everything else is just meaningless. And I want to talk about that as we move into uh, really this great lesson. And um, I really love this episode because this is where a shift happens, where we can exercise uh, more of what will help you on a daily basis. Serve for authentic fulfillment. I'm going to look at four areas. Serve upward. That means that you're going to seek God in spirit and in truth. You're going to serve inward. You're going to be loyal and consistent in your service to yourself. You're going to serve outward. You're going to help others regardless of how they respond to you. And then you're going to serve forward because you're going to leave an impact in this world and leave a legacy. So let's explore how Altruistic service can lead you to authentic fulfillment when the cause is greater than you. In other words, outside of your control, the sources of your fulfillment can be categorized in how satisfied you are 
in serving upward, inward, outward, or forward, that level of fulfillment within each category can be described by your sense of wholeness, feeling, or alignment in awareness of your purpose. Years ago, my wife and I participated in a medical missions trip. Uh, We flew for many miles and uh, many hours. We slept on the plane all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to get to Africa with a few stops here and there. Additionally, we once we landed into Entebbe, we uh, through Kampala, which was really cool to see all the people, and uh, it looked like a regular city. And then we went into Masindi. Well, as we were traveling because we had to travel, I think it was probably about five hours to get to where we needed to from Entebbe to Masindi, that we rode in a vehicle that uh, had to go through all of these different types of roads and potholes. And many times we were traveling from di- to different destinations on this missions trip. There were potholes. We even had some that were on the trip with us that got car sick. There were so many inconveniences throughout uh, we, when we ate, we only ate to really nourish our bodies because the food was uh, just very different than the cuisine we were used to. And um, we chose to only eat what we needed to give us strength and continue to the next day. We worked 12-hour days, by the way, in some of those days that we were out there. And it was really exciting because we saw people that were getting healed and Um, sicknesses that were being helped. I'm not a medical person, but I was able to help by being on the end of it where they called us the pharmacy. So we would disperse the medications and explain and give instructions to um, everyone that needed it. And I had a translator with me and I would explain the instructions. And uh, it was really exciting to really have that connection with all of those that were there. We had inconveniences when we We're at our hotel, the hotel that we stayed at. We couldn't drink out of the water, out of the, uh, directly out of the fountain. So we had our bottled water, even when we brushed our teeth. A lot of inconveniences, but it was actually so fulfilling to serve. When we served and we saw people being blessed, we saw people come to the Lord. That was amazing. And so I'm going to encourage you in this episode that. When you serve, there is an authentic fulfillment that comes over you. So what we experienced and what I experienced during that time was that not only were the people that we were um, working with and those that we were talking to, were they getting a blessing from us being there, but we were getting a blessing from giving. We even had conversations with some of Uh, The teachers that were there, they had questions to us, and they looked at us and they said, um, same, same, meaning that we had the same skin color, and they had many questions about us being African Americans here in America and how the schools were and how our children were. So we were able to show pictures and share pictures, and we found that no matter what the people that we talked to or those that were there in Uganda, that they would... Uh, really open and open arms, they gave us information and they had smiles on their faces because they told us the most important thing to them was their families. The most important thing to them was their tribe. And um, we began to talk to them and try to associate with our lives. What's our tribe? What's Who are the people that we are around? Who are we serving on a consistent basis? Life-changing experience for us And I want you to have that type of experience in your life as well. By looking into how you can serve. Serving is a key in this journey of having a spiritual awakening. Also in having a place in your life where your life can have a change. To have a transformation happen in your life. Along this journey, if you can serve, even in the most difficult times, even in the most, uh, some of the most inconvenient places, they, because there's a cause that is greater than yourself, it's an altruistic type of service, then you will begin to experience this type of authentic fulfillment. 
So I wanted to give you four of the areas I brought up at the beginning. So let's start off by talking about serving upward. We are talking about the ability to serve that greater self that is within you. We discussed having a spirit within us in the earlier chapters. As we seek God in spirit and in truth, we will begin to serve upward to that greater purpose that is within us. Serving upward, I want you to think about what it says in John 12, 26. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servants must be where I am and the Father will honor anyone who serves me. When you begin to serve upward, you follow the instructions of Christ. That Christ consciousness we've talked about, having a different level of thinking that it's not only the things that I see with my senses, but I am going to live a life where my faith and the vision that God has provided to me is going to be what I'm going to work with. I remember as a child having the game, follow the leader. The essence of that game is that you would follow whatever the leader would tell you to do, gestures, movements, whatever it was, and you would mimic that leader, regardless of how outrageous the movements were or how silly they were, you were to follow the leader, otherwise you were out of the game. The same thing is what Christ is challenging us is, can we follow him in that manner? Can we follow him as a leader in our lives that where we can mimic his gestures, mimic what he did, mimic how he served. When we begin to serve our creator by saying, I know that I have been put here for something that's bigger than me, then I'm going to begin to unify and I'm going to honor my creator by serving upward. Finding that purpose, being intentional about who you are, you will now serve him by saying, I am going to fulfill that purpose that I've been put here for, that reason I've been put here for. God, I want you to guide me in this day so that I can continue in my service upward. And when I say upward, it's a service to your creator, your God. Then I want you to think about serving inward. And serving inward is where your soul is. It's time to begin to think about what your soul is built of and created of. It's your mind, your will, your emotions. How can you build that on a more consistent basis? In the scriptures, we know that we can have discipline and a practice over our mind, our will, and our emotions. And some of the questions I want you to think about and ask yourself for your soul, here are some questions to help you practice humility on a daily basis. And I want you to write these down and use these on a daily basis to help you with your serving inward. What am I thankful for? Who do I need to forgive and why? Who can I bless? How? Can I bless them? What problems can I give to God to handle? Have I acknowledged God lately? If so, when and how? When was the last time I demonstrated pride? Am I willing to give up my pride in exchange for God's wisdom to be humble? Each question helps you to increase your awareness of how humble you are in your prideful characteristics. And I want you to look at those responses that you've put down, and I want you to begin to work on being more humble so you can serve faithfully to God. Proverbs 25, 19 says this, like a broken tooth or a lame foot is reliant on the unfaithful in a time of trouble, When you're struggling, a broken tooth or a lame foot is just going to make everything that much worse because you can't really rely on them to fulfill their functions. And when we have anything like pride in our lives, it takes up 
the ability for it to function in our lives. And if we want to function and serve inward, we've got to first be humble. And I want you to then figure out ways that you can serve your mind. How can you add to your mind positive things, things that strengthen you, things that make you better? How can you make sure that your will is strong enough to stand firm no matter what happens and what goes on in your life? I want you to speak to those things in your life that are uh, making you feel a particular way. I want you to pull out a feelings wheel and you can get to a feelings wheel. I have one on my website, feelings.randyatkinsjr.com. And you read the feelings wheel by going to the middle. And those are our primary emotions. And you can then go from those primary emotions like sad, happy, um, disgusted, and take a look. And then you can go to the outer circles to give you a more specific feeling that you may have. And then there's another level that you can go even more specific. And that will help you identify your feelings. Because if you can identify your feelings, then you can begin to address those and become better and serve inward. Because we have to have the capacity in our souls so that we can move to the next level of service, which is serving outward. It is service, not serve us. When I say serving outward, we are going to serve those who are around us. Look for serving beyond yourself. But you have to make sure you're, that you had served inward. You can now serve outward. And look for the place where you're serving outward. Because if you don't have a balance of making sure you serve inward, serving outward can become an obligation. It can become something that is no longer a service. It becomes a duty. Sometimes when you have a duty or an obligation, you can become resentful. This happens sometimes in marriages. It happens sometimes in different relationships. If you're not serving inward first before you serve outward, I want you to now, once you've served yourself inward and you've gotten to a place, you can begin to serve outwardly. Outwardly is what mostly we think of when we think of service, relatively easy to serve those who are above us or we feel have more than us or, or maybe in power. But I want you to look around you and maybe find those that may not be in power that you can serve. I want you to look at all that you can serve where there is no immediate benefit for you that you can serve. Because when you begin to serve in this way, this is when you begin to actually show altruism. This is when you begin to show that I am going to help anyone that I feel needs any kind of help, no matter where they are, no matter their socioeconomics, no matter what um, race they may be, no matter who, how they may live or where they have come from or what gender they may be. I want you to look at everyone outwardly and find ways that you can serve. The example I want you to think about is in John 13, 3 and 5, where Christ was with his disciples and he was intentional about serving them. He knelt down with a towel and a basin of water and he washed their feet. This was a typical thing that would happen in homes as a hospitality because they would have dirty feet but Jesus, being their teacher, and many times you see in the Bible where he's their master and their teacher, he kneels down and he shows servant leadership. I want you to make sure that you're thinking about what Christ did and follow the leader. Matthew 23, 11 and 12 says it this way, the greatest among you must be a servant, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. My question to you is, do you want to be exalted? Do you want to move to a different level in your life? I'm going to encourage you to serve someone else, to serve 
those that are around you, to look for ways to serve. When you do this, your life will change. You will no longer be focused on the things that distract us from our greater purpose. Part of our greater purpose is to relate to others. Part of our greater purpose is to help others that are around us. When we help those, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, or those that are uh, in different organizations with us, when we help, it gives us a better feeling of uh, a fulfillment, of satisfaction, of wholeness in our lives. When we serve those like Christ served his disciples and he washed their feet, we begin to see that no matter what position we may be in, that we have been built so that we can come into this world and serve in a greater way. But I encourage you that you must first serve upward, inward, then outward. When you do this, you can then be in full balance to be able to help address the needs of those that are around you and bless them in a way that will help them and help you as well. We did the same thing when we were in Uganda and it changed our lives. We were able to feel how God was really wanting us to bless no matter who we are, where we are, that we are to bless those that are around us and serve and using our unique talents to do that. Christ didn't come to be served. He came to serve, and we should follow the leader, Christ, and do the same thing in our lives. And the last area I want you to think about is I want you to serve forward. There's a time component in our service. In this journey, after you've served upward, you served inward, and you served outward, there's some service that we do that will go beyond our life here. This is a service that will leave a legacy and will impact this world forevermore because you were here. This is when you get to leave a mark. This is where you serve for future impact. You may not see the end of what you do, I don't believe Martin Luther King Jr. actually got to see everything in that dream he said he had. Because of his service then, we began to see some of those dreams that he had come true. He served forward. We have the ability to serve forward by taking the time to do the work now to serve and look at how we can make our society better. How can we make the world better? How can we love in a greater way? When we serve authentically based on who we are, we're going to see fulfillment not only in our lives, but we'll see fulfillment in our future generations. How would it be that the future generations are impacted by what we do, how we move, how we talk, what we think about. So when we seek our creator, he's not only talking about now, he's also going to be in the future. He's going to touch those generations through us. When we follow his lead by serving and making sure service is a big part of our lives. And there's no one in this world that can't serve in some capacity. Service doesn't look the same for everyone but I want you to do what you can do. I want you to serve upward, inward, outward, and I want you to serve forward. Leave a legacy. Leave something for this next generation. Leave something for this world that it will be impacted by you because God put something on the inside of you that you would produce on purpose. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. This episode is one of the culminations of what we've been talking about, about becoming spiritually awakened, becoming closer to our creator, getting closer to being a producer that can create more, create on that purpose that you were born for. 
You were born to be a producer. You were born to create. You were born to make differences and changes. And some of that comes through when we begin to serve in all capacities. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode and this lesson that we just went through. And I'm looking forward to us doing some greater things. So I want you to think about how can you serve and have authentic fulfillment. Next week, we're going to be talking about experience overflow. Once we've gotten to a place in our spiritual awakening and we are closer because we've been producing on purpose as a producer and creating, there is a place where you begin to experience overflow in your life. How would it be to experience overflow in your relationships? That means an overflow of love, overflow in your finances or in your resources in your life, overflow in your health. That means you are strengthened. You have no sickness. You are in a place of overflow that comes from your creator. Overflow, meaning that you are fulfilled and whole in everything that you do. Experience overflow. That's our next episode. I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to this podcast. I would like to ask you a favor. If you would subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you are listening on. Also provide a review. Your feedback through reviews and sharing information allows me to create better content and also provide better information so that we can all be greater and better producers and that we can live a life that is more joyful, more happy, more loving and exciting and fulfilling. You can also reach me at my website, which is randyadkinsjr.com. And there you will find information about the podcast, about my book, Produce on Purpose, Experiencing Life Being the Real You. I will see you on the next episode.